Hello, I'm Dr. Monica Kennedy, Senior Trade and Investment Commissioner at Austrade, based in Mumbai, India. I'm heading Austrade's education practice in South Asia. In the video today, I'll be focusing on opportunities emerging in South Asia. In our previous video, you heard from Catherine Gallagher, South Asia Head of Austrade, on the changes occurring in the market, including the impact of COVID-19 on education sector policy reforms, and the rise of edtech and key challenges. This video will set out in some detail the three key priorities which we're following. The first in enrolments, second partnerships, and third edtech. We anticipate these three will deliver significant wins for the Australian education sector in South Asia. So let's start with enrolments first, the core business of education focused institutions. The pandemic has changed the market dynamics negatively, but in 2020, Australia's bravely maintained its standing in South Asia with two markets, India and Nepal, uh, constituting 17% and 8% respectively of total student enrolments recorded at Australian institutions. Although Australia lost some share of the market to competitors, most notably Canada and the UK, our enrolment numbers in December 2020 were strong with flat growth on the previous year from India, a decline of 2.1% from Nepal, a 1.7% decline, decline from Sri Lanka and a 1.2% decline from Bangladesh. The ongoing pandemic crisis in the market, coupled with vaccinations and border policies changing across the globe, is rapidly impacting on destination perceptions for our students. We're looking at ways to maintain and improve Australia's perception as a high quality destination. Austrade has scoped and is delivering a number of initiatives to support Australian education institutions. Among these, the Digital Education Hub, has been developed as a unified source of information and for engagement of potential students with Australian institutions, supported by multi-channel marketing campaigns to drive student and stakeholder traffic to the hub. We're also executing a well-defined education agents engagement strategy to proactively manage risks, support recruitment events, and we're delivering potential student competitions and masterclass series to showcase Australian education capability. The second priority is partnerships. In Sri Lanka, due to budget constraints in subsidising state universities, the government allows foreign education providers to establish joint ventures with local institutions. The favourable mandate of the Sri Lankan government has attracted many Australian providers to establish higher education partnerships in Sri Lanka. Transnational education has been developing there with more than 25 strategic Australian transnational education partnerships in the country. Several business models are being adopted through these partnerships and they include articulation, pathway and full award delivery in country. In Bangladesh too, since April 2014, foreign universities have been able to establish independent campuses under the Private Universities of Act of 2010 and subject to the approval of the University Grants Commission. There are some inherent challenges uh, in establishing these institutional sites, um, but recently the UGC has approved one Australian institution, the first, which will launch its programs in Bangladesh in just a couple of months. Opportunities exist in both Sri Lanka and Bangladesh for Australian institutions to, to collaborate with local institutions on program delivery, curriculum design, faculty exchange and training, knowledge partnerships, distance learning and online modules. In India, the opportunities for partnership under the new education policy are still being worked through. We understand that collaborations need support and future enrolments, our number one priority, uh, is reliant upon our ability to be able to collaborate effectively in the market. The third key priority is EdTech and it's primarily emerging as a key opportunity in India. This sector is on a very high growth trajectory due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic as an accelerator of change. As a majority of Indian education 
uh, providers went online to teach students in schools, uh, vocational education institutions and universities. Additionally, the Indian government has approved new regulations for online education, which will enable these institutions to engage in online delivery activities. The top 100 Indian universities are encouraged to start online courses to create, distribute and monetize relevant digital content targeted at all sections of Indian society, leading to a much wider reach and impact. Universities beyond the top 100 can deliver up to 40% of the course curriculum online, and this will enable 70 million higher education students to access at least a partially online education experience. Opportunities are emerging for Australian, uh, Australian education providers to partner with institutions in India to provide curriculum for online modules of degree programs or separately provide content to online edtech platforms. Additionally, Indian EdTech companies like Baiju's Upgrade and Unacademy are among others who are raising funds and developing new services for students and institutions. The sector is also attracting interest from technology giants like Google and Lenovo. These emerging changes in the online sector and government reforms present significant commercial opportunities for Australian institutions to partner in India to provide EdTech solutions, platforms and online programs and to get access to learners in the Indian market. EdTech companies in India cater to demand in five key categories, primary education, secondary education, public and private organisational requirements and other skills related training. The pandemic has disrupted business models pursued earlier, but still there are incredible opportunities for Australian organisations to recover from current challenges, renew the value propositions through innovative delivery methods and build resilient models to support long-term growth in South Asia. Our team in South Asia will be happy to support your mid to long-term goals with valid market insights, extensive networks on the ground and deep experience of driving success.